What made you think to start a business catering to babies? Everybody I met in service said they were going to go home and get married and have children. And I decided that along with, with the entree from my uncle, who had influenced me greatly, uh, was enough for me to go into the baby furniture business. You anticipated the baby boom, didn't you? I, you know, I, I was fortunate to join it. I did anticipate to some extent. I had no idea where it would go to. I thought there would be a baby boom. I had no idea of the size of what the toy business can be. Initially, we just sold baby furniture, uh, cribs, high chairs, bathing things, strollers, um, dressing tables. Uh, got in the toy business by pure accident. Somebody came in one day and said, how about a toy for my baby? I looked at him and said, well, what do you mean a toy? Well, you know, something to play with in the high chair or in the playpen or in the stroller. So the first toys we sold were baby toys, all baby toys. And there was a company called Childhood Interest that made very nice baby toys that sold for a dollar or 89 cents or something like that. They were moderately priced goods. And then I guess I discovered as we went on, by the time the second baby came, they didn't buy a new high chair, they didn't buy a new crib, they didn't buy a new bathing thing, but they did buy new toys because the toys in the first baby were gone or they just wanted new things. So the toy business was a repetitive business, while the baby furniture business is once you had a baby, if you had a baby a couple years later, you might buy a new mattress for the crib, you might buy accessory items, but you didn't buy the basic stuff again if your child was three years old and you put the new baby in the crib. You're always dealing with people who are buying something for a baby or a kid. What's that like for you to... Oh, that's fun. It's great. Remember, nobody has to buy what we sell. You buy it because you want to buy it. You don't buy it because you have to buy it. It's a voluntary, it's not like a grocery store or even a liquor store. If you come to us to buy toys, nobody makes you buy a toy. Although, over the years, I have tried to teach children to say, I need it rather than I want it. Uh, on the other hand, nobody really has to buy the product. So it's kind of a happy consumer as a rule. So it's a happy business. Yeah, it is. And you've got to be kind of a kid-like. When you look at what the creativity of the toy market is, you have to have imagination. You have to think like a child. Somebody told me a great story. He says, you want to know about baby toys? He says, lay on the floor and look at it. See what it looks like from their perspective. He says, you know how big you look from a baby? He says, you look huge from a baby. He says, see what color does. I used to experiment with mobiles over cribs with different colors to find out. Is there anything you'd like to say to your grandchildren? Yeah, keep your eye on where you want to go. You can't do it unless you really want it. And if you want it, don't let anything stop you. That's how I feel. And that's what I want them to feel. What would you like them to get out of this video of you? I guess what you've been able to extract from me, which is some knowledge of their background that I'm sure they did not have. I don't think I've ever taken the opportunity to sit them all down in a circle and say, let me tell you the story of my life. Uh, and I think this will be a great, although I wasn't 100% for this to start out with, as you well know, I think this will be a great thing for, their, for them to look at and maybe have some better understanding of where they came from. Uh, I'm sure they'll they'll be happy with it. I'm sure too.